Jesus has saved all, all types of people, terrorists, murderers, thieves and witches. In fact, Jesus has saved people that some of us probably, if we're honest, may not have even given the time of day to. But now they're going on with God and their lives are shining examples and testimonies to his grace. And in John 4, there's an example of Jesus striking up a conversation with someone who the others wouldn't have gone to. It was a Samaritan woman and he asked her for some water. Now it was held that the Samaritans were unclean, so it's fair to say that Jesus was doing what the other disciples perhaps wouldn't have done. Listen, in John 4, all the scriptures I mentioned in this video, by the way, are from John 4. Okay, in John 4, 7 to 10, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone to the town to buy food. And the Samaritan woman said to him, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? So for, well, the Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was who asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So not only did he go to her, but he was speaking to, to her about the water of life. And the conversation didn't end there. In verses 16 to 19, he told her, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you've had five husbands, and the man you are now with is not your husband. What you have said is quite true. So the woman said, I can see that you're a prophet. So not only was she a Samaritan, but she'd already had five husbands, and she now had a partner to whom she wasn't married. But Jesus wasn't looking at those things. He was looking at the person inside, the woman that he was speaking to. And in fact, through confronting her with these things, and what he knew about her, she realised two things. The first was that he wasn't just an ordinary man, he was a prophet, obviously much more, we know he's much more, but he was a prophet. Uh, but also that he knew everything about her and he was still talking to her kindly. And that encounter actually ended with him revealing to her that he was the Messiah. You'll find that in verses 25 and 26. And because of this encounter with Jesus, she then went back to her town and she told the people about him. And listen to what happened then, verses 39 to 41. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of this woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. So through this woman, many more people became believers. Now to the natural eye, she seemed like an unlikely person, but Jesus went to her. And there were lots of examples in the Bible of God choosing people that others wouldn't have done. David was one the youngest of the sons of Jesse, yet rather than all of his older brothers, God chose him, and he went on to slay Goliath and eventually to become king. And Paul the Apostle was another one. He was so zealous in his persecution of the Christians, but then he became God's messenger with the gospel when the Lord touched him, and he did great things for the Lord. And if we can remember these things, perhaps we won't be quick to write people off, no matter what they look like or how low they've sunk or perhaps what's in their past because an encounter with God can change a person so radically and it's forever. And if God has wiped someone's slate clean, then who are we to hold it against them? I mean, the Lord looks at people and he, and he knows. He knows those that he's chosen. We don't always know, but we can go with, with an open heart with his love and we can reach out to people and trust him to do the rest.